This will seem like a strange topic. What? Use Google for privacy? This is really an important lesson in everything I teach. To me, privacy isn't necessarily about hiding what we do. Instead, if you carefully manage your identity, you can safely use Google Voice, Gmail, and even YouTube without compromising your privacy. I'm going to teach you that. Today, we will focus on managing your phone numbers, and this is very key to privacy. I will teach you how to segregate identities and manage this safely for use on social media and two-factor authentication, as well as for everyday use. For those of you in countries without Google Voice, this example can be used with any automated phone service, lots of paid ones out there that operate like Google Voice. So don't tune out, I'll give you alternatives at the end. Just pay attention to the logic. This is a basic privacy technique, stay tuned. I've done a video on YubiKey from YubiCo, which I use for two-factor authentication or 2FA. Here's a newer version of the YubiKey 5C NFC, which works with mobile phones and desktops using NFC and USB. So it's an all-in-one device. Often the most used 2FA is an SMS text message or a one-time code that is sent to your phone. I don't like this option because both of these can be hijacked with a SIM jacking attack. I recommend having a physical security key such as a YubiKey. A YubiKey provides a much better option as it requires someone to physically have the device to log in and it doesn't require you to have to reveal your phone number to a service asking for a second factor. I believe this is the best way to prevent your online accounts from getting hacked. The YubiKey can be used to protect social media accounts, email, password managers, and more. Get $10 off a 5 Series YubiKey if you use the coupon code ROB10. The link is in the description. Before I get into how I use Google Voice and Gmail for privacy, I want to give you some food for thought as a foundation. If you've studied how the artificial intelligence or AI worked with car self-driving, for example, you will understand a bit of how AI works to spy on us. At this stage, the AI isn't perfect. The technology used for AI is called a neural network. Instead of teaching the computer actual logic, the AI learns by probability based on behavior it encounters. In the case of profiling our activities, it is based on following common patterns of human behavior. What does a normal sheep-like person do? And it learns from this from extensive repetition of observations. Even when a human attacks you with techniques like doxing or phishing, these approaches rely on expected human behavior. So if you act like a typical person, then you will inevitably be a good target. But the AI fails miserably in what are called edge cases, where the behavior doesn't fit the norm. And this is what I want to capitalize on. We can break the circle of spying on our data by confusing the algorithm and being an edge case. We'll be the outlier 1%. In other words, I will teach you how to benefit from not being a normie. Now, this background is important because I want you to all think independently when you analyze any technology. You can apply this to everything. Today, we will utilize this in managing our identity using phone numbers. One of the important things I teach is that I do not like using apps that rely on phone numbers. I've said this in a video where I discuss WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. The AI can learn about your behavior through metadata. The significant pieces of metadata I want to focus on are phone numbers and contact lists. The reason this is complex to defend against is that people need to reach you so you have to have a phone number. But when you get added to people's contact list, everyone you know is uploading your phone number in a contact list to social media, messaging platforms, LinkedIn, and so on. The result of these contact lists is that platforms like Google, Facebook, among others, are able to create what is called a relationship map meaning someone can track who's talking to whom in the world based on a phone number. For this reason, you have to be careful about who has your phone number, especially if it's a long-term phone number. 
Today, this is even more complicated because many of you don't know of alternate ways to do two-factor authentication. And when prompted for a phone number, you give it willingly. So Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp are tightly tied together just from the phone number together with a relationship map based on those phone numbers. And even beyond that, someone I know collects phone number databases as a hobby. If your phone number is entered somewhere, he will be able to do a reverse lookup on the phone number and find out who owns that phone number without talking to the carrier. And it's not limited to the phone number. Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp are also tied together based on your email address, which again is used for two-factor authentication. People who give this information without thought are then making sure each identity is tied to the other even without real names or using an alias on one platform versus another. This is the AI expected behavior, by the way. So the AI scours the internet for these matches and uses it to fingerprint you and together with other identifiers such as your IP address, device fingerprint, or browser fingerprint. So how do you beat this? The answer is to properly segregate identities. If you have a real name identity on the internet, and pretty much all of us do, then you need to segregate it from all other uses where you want some privacy. Primarily, it means having different phone numbers for different purposes and having different email addresses as well. And you have to make sure that the other ways of linking these identities are not available to the tracker, such as device fingerprinting, browser fingerprinting, and IP addresses. I already have videos on having a de-Google phone, so watch that because it will remove the ability to be tracked by a device fingerprint. I also have a video on browser isolation, which prevents tracking using a browser fingerprint. And lastly, you need to either use a VPN or use cell data so you can't be tracked by IP address. It's important that you think of the big picture, otherwise all our attempts at identity obfuscation just gets wasted. So back to the phone numbers. The tip I'm going to give you is specifically for the USA, but I'm sure if you catch the gist of this, you can find a suitable substitute for everything I'm going to say. I'll tell you my setup. I have a main phone number, which I've used for a long time, and it is clearly tied to a public identity. Family members and longtime associates know the number. It's a bit too late to change the data on an existing phone number unless you change your phone number. So the database will exist on it. However, I wouldn't be concerned about a family contact list since that can be derived by other means anyway, like location tracking, common IP addresses, and so on, like multiple phone numbers on a single account. So I let the AI have that. You can't win on that. But what you need to do is to set up a second phone number, and this phone number will be used for people you don't know, and also for two-factor authentication if you need to use a phone. The problem is that at some point, even this second phone number will be compromised since it will be uploaded in contactless and be spread like wildfire. So you need to be careful about where you use it. If you're intending to use it for social media, do not use the new phone number on any social media that has a real identity, such as Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. In order to do this technique, I use Google Voice. I have video on how to do two-factor authentication without a phone number by using Google Voice. But this is a little different because in this case, you will use Google Voice as your new phone number. It's free. You can set up a new Gmail address, hopefully one without your real name, and then you establish a Google Voice account with it. Of course, the first thing Google will ask you for is your current phone number. This is where you have to use your smarts. Be prepared to have a new SIM card with a new phone number. Here in the US, there's a service called Ting.com, which only identifies me via an email address. I'll put a referral link in the description, and it would be appreciated if you used that. They didn't sponsor this video, by the way. The thing about Ting.com is that for limited use, like incoming calls only, I don't really spend more than $10 a month. Since you pay based on use, a side phone number like this is not intended to generate a lot of traffic. I bought many SIM cards from Teng.com. I've been buying in batches of 50 SIM cards. Then every month, I can terminate the old SIM card and activate a new one, and I get a new phone number. 
there's no charge to terminate a SIM card and buy a new one. So it's like a burner phone. You can change phone numbers as often as you want. Then when I set up my Google Voice account and Gmail, I can use this temporary phone number. Later on, you can actually remove the phone number for 2FA on both Google Voice and Gmail and use some other method like a YubiKey, or you can even authenticate by Google app using notifications. This is important since your phone number is constantly changing. You don't want the Google Voice or Gmail 2FA to use a phone number you no longer use. Avoid phone number 2FA if you can. I'm not actually sure why sometimes I can't set up a Gmail without a phone number, but some people are asked for a phone number. Maybe they're doing a device fingerprint. Not sure. After you're set up, this is what you will do. You will forward the Google Voice number to your new phone number, which will change every month or as often as you want. Google, by the way, will not allow you to use Google Voice as a 2FA, but believe it or not, it is acceptable to most other platforms. They don't know it's Google Voice. And if you're texted, you can have a Google Voice app on your spare phone and you can then see the text messages. As you can see, I'm using the system to benefit me rather than the other way around. I don't have a problem using Gmail, Google Voice, or YouTube as long as it is clear what identity is associated with my activities. Be careful to also limit the use of the Gmail account to unimportant things since obviously Google will read your mail. Since Google Voice cannot be installed on a de-Google phone, I'm using an iPhone 10 with iOS as my secondary phone. This particular phone doesn't leave the house. It has no SIM card. I use another phone for getting the forwarded calls, or sometimes I just switch the SIM on my existing phone. Don't throw away your old phones. You can use it to do what I'm doing here. Now to summarize my setup. To all of you who try to call my published contact number, I will actually never answer the call. That's me. So it just gets stored on Google Voice. I don't incur minutes because I'm not answering. My service is very cheap on Ting.com because it's pay per use. My actual phone number is always changing since I use SIM cards like a burner phone. But my main phone number is fixed to be the Google Voice number. By the way, you can have multiple Google Voice accounts. You just have to follow the same procedures again for another account. With this, I now have the flexibility of giving out a different phone number to anyone that needs it without having to compromise my identity. I can choose to answer a call or not based on what the announcement message is. I received calls from this fixed number, but when I call out, I can hide my phone number or I can use the new phone number for outgoing only. Doesn't matter if someone knows it, if it always changes. There won't be any history on it. How you use it is up to you. The phone number can be a good alternative 2FA phone number for many platforms that are not Google. You can also use it as a business line for incoming messages. Now you don't have to use Google Voice. Google Voice is not available in many countries. So what's the alternative? There are plenty of services that offer forwarding of calls and texts and are much safer than Google, but they're not free. And if you're totally against the concept of using Google because they will read the messages, then there are alternatives. I'll have this listed in the description, but here's a few examples. Line 2, Grasshopper. Believe it or not, you can use Skype number, which is probably the cheapest. Nextiva phone.com. Now there's more, but they range in price from $5 to $20 a month. If you do a good job segregating identities as I teach you here, the AI will actually believe these are different people, in which case then it's like starting them from scratch with new information. You can make the AI believe the profile of a new person. Like I said earlier, use this technique with all the others I've taught you, like defending against device fingerprinting with a Google phone, using browser isolation, having a VPN, and clearly planning out your identities so they don't get mixed up. Don't follow what normies do. Don't be a normie. The normie will be completely tracked by the AI. You will become an outlier and you will disappear and you can even feed the AI some disinformation. Is it too late to defend your privacy? With these techniques, you basically terminate your presence with the old identity and new identities sprout out. 
safer identities. As always, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you hit that subscribe button. As of the time of this video, I've gone past 100K. Thank you. This moved up quickly and your support is appreciated. See you later.